Uh, I will now yield myself uh, such time as I consume, choose to consume, which will be about five minutes. I'd like to ask the panel, perhaps, Mr. Khan, your best um, at answering this, at least the whack at it first. I'm interested in are we giving you the proper tools, the proper ability to be able to effectively do your work? We see in the GAO has recently estimated that the DOD utilizes over 350 different systems for financial management, with some of them being not just old, but incapable of effectively providing data and information, inputting and get out that you what you would need. First of all, are we providing you with what you need? Second of all, have you a list, have you a list of these things to where you've identified them, weaknesses in your own abilities? Question Mr. Khan and then the rest of the panel. Thank you, Chairman Sessions, for that question. Yes, answer to that, uh, your first question is affirmative, yes. Uh, we have the resources and the ability to oversee the Department of Defense. And we work through a coalition of uh, other overseers of the Department of Defense, including the DOD OIG, as well as the public accounting firms who are carrying out the financial statement audits. So it's not just the GEO by itself, but we are working with a network of other auditors. So perhaps what you're suggesting is these outside auditors may not be able to speak transparently to the systems that you would expect them to be able to help you. Is that what you're saying? We can leverage their work. If there's any ambiguity in the information they're providing, we follow up with the DOD officials and we are able to get the information to satisfy our questions. Okay, well I'm really interested in your operation. I do recognize you have outside auditors. I do recognize those outside auditors speak to you. I do recognize, I'm talking about your ability that you control and, and the things whether we're giving you the money the effort and the attention to fix your own shop in these what might be antiquated systems. Right, Congressman Sessions. Our, uh, the GAO's uh, own operations are working efficiently and effectively. We have the resources to be able to carry out our audits at the DOD. Okay, so your testimony is that you would disagree with what GAO reported that it estimates that DOD utilizes over 350 different systems for financial management. That's the DOD. Uh, that is a correct number. DOD uses several hundred. Greetings, friends. I have breaking news to share with you this Sunday. There is a new update on Social Security, and top leaders and lawmakers are now pushing their plans to change key programs like Medicare and Social Security. Some economists are expecting the next monthly benefit adjustment to be even higher. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video for the latest news. Also, this coming Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. My friends, please enter these weekly giveaways by clicking and liking several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning the weekly giveaways. Three of the former president's rivals for the 2024 GOP presidential nomination are pushing for cuts to Social Security benefits that would only affect younger Americans. In comments on Sunday, as well as in interviews earlier this year, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said, Social Security will need to be revamped, but not for people who are near or in retirement. Former Vice President Mike Pence and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley have taken similar positions since launching their presidential campaigns. From the earliest days of his 2016 run, the former president has vowed not to touch either Medicare or Social Security. The positions the three candidates are taking suggest that even the fiscally conservative candidates in the GOP presidential primary are reluctant to endorse cutting Social Security for seniors. 
highlighting just how much the party has shifted on the issue. As the Republican Party becomes increasingly reliant on older voters for support, GOP policymakers have followed the former president's lead in steering clear of proposals to cut the programs. Economists of both parties agree that Social Security and Medicare, which is a health insurance program for the elderly, face funding crisis if Congress does not act to shore up their finances, either by reducing benefits or raising taxes. According to the recent reports of the Board of Trustees of the Social Security and Medicare Trust Funds, if no reforms are enacted, Social Security benefits for an estimated 60 million Americans will be cut by 23 percent starting in 2033. Medicare also faces automatic benefit cuts as soon as 2031. President Biden has proposed increasing taxes on the rich and businesses to prevent Medicare from running out of funds. But the latest White House budget does not propose a solution for extending Social Security. Numerous congressional Democrats have called for trillions of dollars in new taxes to avoid the Social Security shortfall as well. Policy experts have long said it will probably take a mixture of reduced spending and higher taxes to address the looming funding shortage facing Medicare and Social Security. People in their 40s are still more than two decades away from receiving Social Security benefits. So dear friends, what are your thoughts on this? Please leave your thoughts in the comments section below. As previously reported by Go Banking Rates, a 3% COLA would represent a big drop from this year's COLA of 8.7%. A COLA of 3% would raise a current average monthly benefit of $1,787 by about $53. Social Security recipients will not learn the bottom line until Medicare Part B premiums are announced. Medicare Part B premiums are automatically deducted for most beneficiaries. Medicare Part B premiums are automatically deducted from most beneficiaries' Social Security checks, and those deductions can have a major impact. In its annual report released in March, the Medicare trustees forecast that monthly Part B premiums will increase from $164.90 in 2023 to $174.80 next year. But as experts pointed out, that's just an estimate and doesn't include any significant new costs that come up after the estimate is released. One of the most significant new costs could be Medicare's coverage for another new Alzheimer's drug. It's expected to cost $26,000 per year without insurance. Although most beneficiaries may see their Part B premiums rise by almost $15 per month, other costs could drive Part B premiums even higher. Well, my beautiful and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Sunday. Thank you, friends, so very much for being part of this community and for being here every single day. To say thank you and to show my appreciation I will be announcing winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway every Friday. My dearest friends, please make sure that you enter these weekly giveaways by clicking and liking several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed Sunday.